Welcome to Eggheads, the show where a team of five quiz challengers pit their wits against possibly the greatest quiz team in Britain. They are the Eggheads. And you've got a bit of attitude about you today, Eggheads. Oh, yeah. Yes. So. We're what you might call EWA, eggs with attitude. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, challenging our resident quiz champions today are the out-of-date beer vouchers. Now, this team from Warwickshire all quiz together at the White Swan in Henley in Arden. Let's meet them. Hello, I'm Mike, and I'm a retired clinical researcher. Hello, I'm Paul, and I'm a director of my own marketing company. Hi, I'm Bernie, and I'm a non-executive director. Hi, I'm Pete. I'm the managing director of a small manufacturing company. Hi, I'm Richard. I'm a project development manager in the electricity industry. So, Mike and team, welcome. Great to see you. Got to ask you, Mike, about the team name. Um, well, Jeremy, first time we ever quizzed together was at our local pub. And we were fortunate enough to win, um, and the prize was beer vouchers. Three weeks later, we went back to the pub, said, we'd like some beer, please. And they said, sorry, mate, they're out of date. So, hence, they did relent, and they, they honoured them in the end. They but... weren't even joking, they were quite serious. No, they were serious. Expired. They were expired. That ever happened to any of you? They usually do it on a six-day thing, so you've got to go back before the next quiz. That's uh, it, yeah. 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 Oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh, I see. Well, listen, good luck. Out of date beer Thank vouchers. You. Thank you. Every day there is a thousand pounds worth of cash up for grabs for our challengers. If they fail to defeat the eggheads, the prize money rolls over to the next show. So, out of date beer vouchers, after a, a bit of a difficult time, the eggheads have got back on the road. They've won the last two games. They're starting to have a bit of a swagger, and that means three thousand pounds is on the table for you to win. Would you like to try? Absolutely. Yes, we would. Good Absolutely. stuff. I love it. So, the first head to head battle is on the subject of geography, and you can choose between. <laughs> Judith, Beth, Pat, Steve and Chris. So, Richard. Richard. Yeah. Richard. Yeah. Richard. That came up nicely. Yeah. Who do you so, want? I'm geography. So, um, difficult choice, but uh, I think it's going to be Judith. OK. Yeah. So, Richard from out-of-date beer vouchers versus the very much in-date Judith Keppel. <laughs> <laughs> you happy with that? It sounded insincere. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> to ensure there's no conferring, would you, would you please take your positions in our famous question room? All right, Richard, your choice. Would you like to go first or second against Judith? I'll go uh, first, please, Jeremy. And here we go. Good luck. Which of these peninsulas is part of Egypt? Iberian, Balkan or Sinai? OK. Um, hopefully that's uh, fairly straightforward. Um, the answer is Sinai. Sinai is correct. Judith, your question. Which motorway links Southampton to London? M3, M4 or M62? Southampton to London. Southampton to London. Uh, I know it quite well. It's the M3. It is the M3. Well done. Do you go on it a lot? Well, yes, I do. I do go on it. My parents used to live down it on the way to Southampton. Right. This is almost your perfect question. <laughs> yes, good one. OK. Richard, your question. The country of Zambia is bordered by how many countries? One, three or eight? Wow. Um, well, it's definitely not one. I think Botswana, Zimbabwe, Malawi definitely, probably DRC. I, I think there's more than three. So on that basis, I'm going to make a punt and go for eight. Eight is correct. Yay. Well done. <laughs> OK, Judith, your question. JFK Airport is located in which of New York's five boroughs? Brooklyn, Queens or Manhattan? Well, it's not in Manhattan, because that's covered in skyscrapers, so it wouldn't be a good idea. Oh, Lord, I, you know, I don't know. It never occurred to me to think about it. Um, Queens. Queens is quite right. Oh, well, that's a relief. OK, back to you, Richard. Trying to get three out of three here. What is the approximate population of Mexico? 40, 120, or 200 million? OK, so uh, Mexico City is a very big city. I think that has 20 million in itself. Um, I don't think it's as much as 200, and I don't think it's as few as 40. So um, I'm going to shoot down the middle here and go for 120 million. Yes, you're quite right. Well done. 120 million. <laughs> three out of three, so... Let's see, Judith, you've got to get this one right. I know. You're feeling focused? I am. Here we go. The national flag of which of these South American countries 
features a white star in the upper hoist corner. Brazil, Chile or Argentina? I'm hopeless at flags. I simply can't get a flag into my head. A well, it's not Argentina, because that's got something blue in the middle. Um, Brazil's got something funny in the middle. I think it's Chile, because uh, I've eliminated the others. Yes, on the basis that Argentina's got something blue in the middle, and Brazil's got something funny in the middle. It's got a coffee bean or something. I, don't I think know it's a it globe, is. isn't it? I don't know. Anyway, Chile's right. Chile's right. Doesn't yeah. matter what the others have got. Well done. Three out of three for you both. <laughs> oh, it's a bit tense here. So we go to sudden death, Richard. Okay. It gets a little bit harder because I don't give you alternative options. Are you ready? I am. The 1,972 feet tall Abraj Al Bayt Towers also known as the Macca Royal Clock Tower Hotel, is a feature of which country? I don't know. Um, but I do know there's been a lot of tall building in uh, Dubai. So it could be Dubai. Um, so I'm just going to go for Dubai. It's Saudi Arabia, oh, I'm afraid. Bad luck, Richard. But I, I completely <laughs> bought your logic there. Judith, you can get the round with this. The Taklamakan Desert occupies approximately 125,000 square miles of which Asian country? My son walked across it um, and stayed in a yurt and wrote the most wonderful letter from the yurt, really poetic. Um, where was he? Well, he was west of China, I think. It could, I suppose, still be China. I think I'm going to say China, because I can't... Um, I think it might still be in China. You're right. It is. China's correct. Yeah, west of China is China. Yeah. It turns out. Judith, you've got it on geography. Well done. Sorry, Richard. You played very well. OK. Just a tiny little thing with the, uh, the tower. So you'll be knocked out. Judith will be in the final round. Please, both of you, come back and we'll play on. So, as it stands, the out-of-date beer vouchers have lost one brain from the final round. The eggheads have not lost any. The next subject is film and TV. So, which <laughs> voucher would like this? Pete, over to you. Pete, pretty Peter. simple, not much discussion. Pete, Pete OK. Who would you like to take on? Did we say Chris? Did we say Chris? Did we say Chris? Mike, Skip, did we say Chris? Uh, we'll take Chris. OK, Pete from the out-of-date beer vouchers versus Chris. So, let's see what happens. Please go to our question room now. All right, so film and TV. Pete, would you like to go first or second? Uh, I'd like to go first, Jeremy, please. Here is your first question. Which of these TV characters is best known for his expert knowledge of antiques? Pete, is it Bergerac, Lovejoy or MacGyver? Oh, that takes me back. Um, I do remember watching this back in the day. Might have, I think it was the 80s. Uh, I'd go Lovejoy. Love, Joy is quite right. Well done. Chris, your question. Which businessman has been a dragon on the first 14 series of the TV show Dragon's Den? Richard Branson, Alan Sugar or Peter Jones? Well, not Richard Branson. Uh, Alan Sugar does The Apprentice, so it's got to be Peter Jones. It is Peter Jones, yeah, the tall guy. Yeah. OK, Pete, who provided the voice of grown-up Elsa in the 2013 animated film Frozen? Kristen Bell, Idina Menzel, or Leah Michelle? That's a very good question. I know the movie, but I have to admit that I don't recognize any of those three names, and so it's going to be a complete guess. I'll go Kristen Bell. Ah, uh, let's check with an egghead, Beth. Uh, no, Kristen Bell played Anna, her, um, Elsa's sister. Elsa was, play Elsa was voiced by Idina Menzel. Dina Menzel is the answer. Chris, your question. The BBC Sports presenter Hazel Irvin is from which part of the UK? Is Hazel from Scotland, Wales or Northern Ireland? Well, Irvin, the town's in Scotland. So, on that basis, I'll say Scotland. Yeah, you know who we mean, don't you? Yeah, I know, yeah. You've heard her speak? Can't say a caller to mind. She's got a Scottish accent. Has she? Yeah, she's Scottish. Scotland is the answer. Oh, she might have been from Northern Ireland. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. She could have uh, maybe yeah. moved. Yeah. OK, Pete, your question, and you need to get this right, Pete, to stay in. Which actress became the second wife of Steven Spielberg in 1991? Isabella Rossellini, Linda Hamilton or Kate Capshaw? 
I actually know the answer, I think, because uh, she starred in one of the Raiders of the Lost Ark movie, or the Harrison Ford uh, Raiders movies, uh, Kate Capshaw. It is indeed Kate Capshaw, well done. So we're level, but Chris, you have the advantage. Mm. If you get this question right, you've knocked out Pete. In the 2016 survival film, The Shallows, Blake Lively's character is hunted by what type of creature? Anaconda, shark, or crocodile? Uh, I believe he gets hunted by a crocodile. He's a woman. <laughs> right. You, have you seen it, or...? No, I've heard of it. Sharks tend to be pelagic, and anacondas are up South American rivers, so in the shallows it'd be a crocodile. Got it. Let's see if the eggheads think you're right. Eggs? Blake Lively's a woman. I think it's a shark. The crocodile was not in the film. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, must be a shark, it may have but... swam alongside her during filming, but it was not a part of the film. Shark is the answer. Oh, right. OK. So we go to sudden death. Well done, Pete. That was... You held your nerve there. So we go to sudden death. I don't give you options. Here's your question. In the TV soap EastEnders, what is the first name of Grant and Phil Mitchell's sister? A uh, wild guess. Susan. Samantha is the answer. Or Sam. Chris, you can take a round with this. The name of which American city features in the title of a 1995 Nicolas Cage film? Las Vegas. Yes, the film was leaving Las Vegas. You're absolutely right. So on sudden death, you've got it. So both times, they've just squeaked in, challengers. Chris, you're through to the final. Pete, sorry you've been knocked out. Lucky Come back to us, and we'll play another round. As it stands, the out-of-date beer vouchers have lost two brains, and both of them on sudden death, so... Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like you've presented your vouchers to the eggheads and they've said they were just, <laughs> just a yeah, day out. Yeah, exactly. The eggheads have not lost any. They're just sitting there, they're looking smug. The next <laughs> subject is arts and books. Oh. Who wants arts and books? <laughs> well, 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 nobody wants it, but I think, <laughs> but I think I'm going to take it. OK, Paul, against which egghead? And you can have, let's see, Steve, Pat or Beth. So any of the three in the middle. Nice, Steve. Steve yeah. Steve. OK, we'll take Steve, please, Jeremy. Very good. So, Paul, from the out-of-date beer vouchers playing one of our newest eggheads, Steve, please go to the question room now. Arts and books. Paul, would you like to go first or second? Uh, I'll go first, please, Jeremy. And good luck to you. Here is your question. Which of these Lord of the Rings characters has the surname Gamgee? Frodo, Samwise or Gandalf? Well, it's absolutely not a strong point, this. Um, and Baggins is the only surname I'm really aware of on Lord of the Rings, which, of course, is Bilbo, so I'm just going to guess Frodo. No. Teammates? No, it's uh, Samwise. Samwise. Ah. Steve, the titles of how many plays attributed to William Shakespeare feature the name Henry VI? One, three or five? That's three, Jeremy. Just part one, part two, part three, is it? Yeah, simple as that. Three is correct. Back to you, Paul. The pop art movement, in which commonplace objects such as comic strips, soup cans and hamburgers were used as subject matter, began in which decade? 1920s, 1950s or 1980s? Pop art. Pop art movement. Well, I'm associating that with Andy Warhol, which was obviously sort of commercially big in the 60s. So I'm going to guess 1950s. 1950s is quite right. Well done. So we go back to you, Steve. To take the lead, which Charles Dickens character has a nephew named Fred, a sister named Fan, and an ex fiance named Belle? David Copperfield, Uriah Heep, or Ebenezer Scrooge? Yeah, I think uh, the ghost of Christmas past is leading me to Ebenezer Scrooge with this uh, question. Ebenezer Scrooge is yeah. the right answer. So he's got two, you've got one, Paul, and it's a good idea to get this one right. <laughs> Here we go. Which best-selling author created the Women's Murder Club series of murder mysteries? Harlan Coburn, James Patterson, or David Baldacci? I haven't got a clue about that. I'm going to guess Baldacci, but I really don't know. Shall we check with Steve? Do you know? Because it's the most prolific, I might have gone James Patterson, but I really don't know. Yeah, James Patterson is the answer. He is very prolific. Oh, dear, Paul, I'm so sorry. Hey. Uh, Steve has won. Steve has triumphed, and he will be in the final round. 
So you've got to keep slugging away here, challengers. It's not beyond hope, not by any manner of means. Come back and we'll play the last round before the final. So as it stands, the out-of-date beer vouchers have lost three brains from the final round. The eggheads have not lost any. The next subject is sport. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Bad or good? Good. Good. Well, good. No, okay. no, I better not say that because I'm embarrassed <laughs> myself. But yeah, we'll, I'll take that. Okay, Bernie. Against which egg? And I'll take Beth. Okay, fine. I could see that coming. <laughs> <laughs> Was it too obvious? <laughs> now, are the challengers going to win around here before the final? Bernie from Out of Date Beer Vouchers versus Beth from the Eggheads on sport. Please go to the question room for the last time. Well, Beth, you've won two of your last three sport rounds. Mm. There we are. Bernie, would you like to go first or second? Uh, I'll see if I can change our luck um, by going second. Oh, OK. This is exciting. Here we go. Beth, your question. Which team knocked England out of the 2016 European Football Championships? Wales, Russia or Iceland? Exceptionally embarrassing for the England football team that they were knocked out by Iceland. Iceland is the right answer, Beth. Well done. Your question, Bertie. In athletics, a decathlon competition lasts for how many days? Bernie, is it one, two or three? Yeah, this is um, uh, five events per day for um, two days, so the answer is two. Two is correct. Well done. Beth, back to you. Here's your question. Who was the first woman to win four Olympic gold medals for Great Britain? Kelly Holmes. Laura Trott or Rebecca Adlington? Kelly Holmes famously won two in 2004 in um, Athens. Rebecca Adlington won two, but wasn't able to uh, two in Beijing, but wasn't able to repeat that in London 2012. So the answer's got to be Laura Trott. Very good, Laura Trott. It is. So to catch up, your question, Bernie, the basketball player Magic Johnson spent his whole career with which NBA team? Chicago Bulls, LA Lakers, or Boston Celtics? Well, Magic Johnson. Um, the, uh, it was Michael Jordan was the famous player for the Bulls. Larry Bird, the very famous one for the Celtics. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that Magic Johnson didn't play for either of those two, but I think I'll go for LA Lakers. Nicely done. You're right, LA Lakers, it is. This is impressive. Well done, Bernie. Beth, to you. Which cricket umpire was nicknamed Slow Death due to the theatrically protracted manner in which his finger was raised to give a batsman out? Dickie Bird, Billy Bowden or Rudy Kurtzman? Hmm, well, Dickie Bird, that's already a nickname. Um, so I don't think it's him. Billy Bowden, wasn't he the New Zealand one that had always had a crooked finger when he raised an out? So it could be Rudy Kurtzer. <sighs> oh. Billy Bowden. It's Rudy Kurtzer. Oh, God. I thought you were going straight there. Mm. So your chance to take the round here, Bernie, on the third question. Jack Law and Chris Mears are famous names in which sport? Is it diving, rowing or swimming? Uh, yeah, I can confidently say water was definitely involved, um, but, uh, yeah, they, they were synchronised uh, divers who won a gold in the Rio Olympics, so diving. Diving is the right answer. Well done, you're in the final round, so... <laughs> maybe turning things around. Sorry, Beth, been knocked out on the should umpire. Should have gone, should have done it, should have just... Uh, just... <laughs> so, we've got quite a final to come. Please return, we'll play it. So, the challenger's bouncing back at just the right moment, maybe. Let's see. This is the moment we have been playing towards. It is time for our final round, which, as always, is general knowledge. But I'm afraid those of you who lost your head-to-heads won't be allowed to take part in this round. So that's Paul, Pete and Richard from the Out of Date Beer Vouchers and also Beth from the Eggheads. Would you please now leave the studio? Mike and Bernie, you are playing to win the Out of Date Beer Vouchers £3,000. Chris, Steve, Pat and Judith, you're playing for something that money can't buy, the Egghead's reputation. As usual, I will ask each team three questions in turn. This time, they're all general knowledge. You can confer, gentlemen. So, out-of-date beer vouchers, the question is, can your two brains overwhelm these four? And would you like to go first or second? Um, we'll follow the pattern of going second to win. 
Hey, second to win. Let's see. First question then to the eggheads. Which actress appeared with Bob Hope and Bing Crosby in the Road 2 series of films? Raquel Welsh, Dorothy L'Amour, or Elizabeth Taylor? Dorothy L'Amour. Yeah, I think so, yeah. 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 Uh, we think that's Dorothy L'Amour. It is Dorothy L'Amour. Well done, well done. Chris, at the end there, mm -hmm. piping up. Challenges. <laughs> in law enforcement, the acronym SWAT stands for Special Weapons and What? Terrorists, targets, or tactics? Fairly sure it's tactics. I'm, you you I'm, said that before. I'm yeah. absolutely yeah. certain it's smart, uh, special weapons targets. and tactics. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay. Um, we're fairly confident on this one, Jeremy. Um, we think it's tactics. Tactics is absolutely right. Okay. Eggman, <laughs> who ran against Jeremy Corbyn in the September 2016 Labour leadership contest? Owen Smith, Tom Watson, or Hilary Benn? Owen Smith. Owen Smith. Yeah. Smith. Yeah. We think that's Owen Smith. Owen Smith is correct. So to catch up, your second question. Which planet in our solar system is closest in size to Earth? Is it Saturn, Mercury, or Venus? Venus or Mars. I thought it was either Venus or Mars. Venus. So I think Saturn. Yeah, Saturn's Mercury huge, smaller, Mercury's Saturn's smaller. Smaller. Yeah. And the Venus, Venus is slightly, slightly smaller. smaller. Slightly smaller. Slightly smaller. Yep. smaller. I think. Venus, we think, is very nearly the same size as the Earth. So our answer is Venus. Venus is correct. Thank you. Your question, Eggheads. The Indian Kailash Satyati was awarded which Nobel Prize in 2014? Literature, peace, or economics? He shared it with uh, Malala yeah. Yousafzai, yeah. didn't he? What was he? I think it was Peace. Charity. I think he, he, he shared it with Manala Yousafzai. Oh, yes, right. Um, yep, yeah, we're happy with it. Yeah. We think that's Peace. Peace is the right answer. They have got three out of three, which is a little bit annoying. Very. Makes it, it makes it tougher for you. You must get this right to keep the contest alive. Get it right, we go to sudden death. Get it wrong, it's over. Challenges. In 2000, the title of Grand Duke Henri was bestowed upon the head of state of which European nation? Henri, H-E-N-R-I. Is it Netherlands, Belgium, or Luxembourg? This to stay in. Oh, Luxembourg's a duchy, isn't it? Luxembourg is a duchy. Yeah, um, I think Luxembourg is. Netherlands, Netherlands, Netherlands Henri doesn't, doesn't ring true. No. So French-speaking Belgium Belgium or is Luxembourg. a kingdom. So a grand, grand duke, duke would you think? And I don't know his name. Yeah, I used to. Luxembourg. I was going to Luxembourg quite a lot a few years ago, but um, I, I can't. I can't fault. Just one, one pause for a second. I can't fault your logic on. Mm. You assume he is the Grand Duke, and it's a and the other two are a kingdom. So, yeah. Yeah, we're not absolutely sure, Jeremy. <laughs> but our thinking is that the Netherlands and Belgium are monarchies with kings or queens, whereas Luxembourg is a duchy and therefore a Grand Duke would be the head of state. We think. So we'll go for Luxembourg. You're absolutely right. Okay. Well done. Three out of three for you as well. Luxembourg it is. You're quizzing well. They got a bit of something, these challenges, haven't they? They have. There's something about them. OK, we go to sudden death. Hey, kids, gets a bit tougher. I don't give you choices. The Ponte dei Sospiri in Venice is known by which English name? Bridge of Sighs. Yeah. Bridge of Sighs. Bridge of Sighs? Yeah. Bridge of Sighs. That's the Bridge of Sighs, Jeremy. Bridge of Sighs is right to stay in and keep the contest alive. Your sudden death question. Which star sign falls after Gemini and before Leo in the calendar? Because I'm, I'm, I'm on the cusp of Cancer. You, Leo, I'm July the 21st. I'm on the cusp of Cancer and Leo. Therefore, it must be Cancer, I think. You're happy with that? Yeah. OK, I'll take your word for it. Cancer. Uh, my colleague is very confident that the answer is... Cancer. Cancer. Got it absolutely right, Bernie. Well done. Cancer it is. So sudden death, the out-of-date beer vouchers are sailing along quite happily here at the moment. Hey, kids, one false move from you. Yeah. I think you're going down the hatch. <laughs> Here's your question. Which royal house came to power in France with the accession of Henry IV in 1589? The Bourbon. Is it Bourbon? Oh, the Valois. It's not. That was Valois before, weren't it, I think? Yeah, there were lots before. We're we talking Henry of Navarre now. Henry of Navarre, we're yeah. talking about, um, which is possible. Is he Bourbon? 
Yeah, so... Oh, bombs. Oh, well, bourbon later. What, could he be? what else could he be other than bourbon? Well, yeah, if we think Balwa really. Was it, was it Henry IV of Navarre? Henry yeah. of Navarre is different to Henry Capet. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Henry Capet back. Henry IV of Navarre. I think that but... came after Capet, to be fair, but I'm not. Chris, what do you think? Mm, well, it could be, because the Bourbons went back quite a way, didn't they? Because Louis XIV was a Bourbon. Yeah, but that's 16 something. Yeah. What did we yeah, do so, when, when so Louis XIV, 15th, 16th, were they. They're Bourbons. They're, they're Bourbons. Bourbons. They're definitely Bourbon kings. So, who, I think we've Louis XIII was before Louis XIV. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, what I mean, dates was he? Louis the Fourteenth on the throne forever went about seventy odd years. Yeah, he was sixteen, fifteen, seventeen. So before, 20, 20. and if he were a Bourbon king, yeah, I think it's very unlikely to think that Henry the Fourth was the first Valois, only reigning for forty years. Yes, I, think I quite that's agree. That's got to precede that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it's we're got back on Bourbons, are we? Back on. I Bourbon. think it's got to be Bourbon. Yeah. yeah. Bourbons. Bourbons. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's Bourbon. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. We're going to go for Bourbon. Bourbon is the right answer. Well done, team. Very well played, eh, kids? A lot of dates, a lot of facts coming out there. Attention. OK, so here we are. You let them go first. They've managed to keep the initiative, which puts you in a slightly dangerous position, perched on the edge. You must get this right. In Greek mythology, who was the brother and husband of the goddess Rhea? <sighs> One name that comes to mind is, is Apollo, because he had multiple relationships. Um, but it may have been further up the up the hierarchical so line. Um, mine's gone black on Greek gods. It, it, it's either right or wrong, but I mean it's not necessarily a million miles away. Um, but I can't think of a better alternative at the moment. And even if I could, it wouldn't be better. It would just be another one. Yeah. So, so go on, go with so the first cut. So we've just got the one. Go with the first cut. Um, <clears throat> Jeremy, we are not at all sure. You may have gathered that. Um, the punt is Apollo. Let's just see, Eggheads, are they right? Cronus. Cronus. Cronus is, is the right answer, yeah. <sighs> it was, I'm not sure it was I'm not sure Cronus. I'm not sure Cronus, Cronus, we have to say congratulations, Eggheads, you have won! <laughs> so, for, further up the line in the sense of what he was older than. Yeah, they go back further. further. Back. They're more senior, more ancient. Mm. Is that right? Cronus was way back? Mm. Yep. Yeah. Apollo's yeah. brother were Artemis. Uh, sister, were Artemis. OK. Before my no. time. <laughs> <laughs> Even my time. Well, yeah. I, get the, the beer vouchers out now and we'll certainly <laughs> accept them. You've been a great team. Thank you very much for coming and playing. Thank you. Thank Commiserations you. to it. you. The Eggheads have done what comes naturally to them. So they reign supreme over Quizland. They're very good, aren't they? It does mean that the challengers are not going home with the £3,000. We'll take the money. We'll roll it over to the next show. Eggheads, well done. Who will beat you? Join us next time to see if a new team of challengers have the brains to defeat these eggheads. £4,000 says they don't. Till we quiz again, goodbye. Welcome to Eggheads, the show where a team of five quiz challengers pit their wits against possibly the greatest quiz team in Britain. They are the Eggheads. And you've got a bit of attitude about you today, Eggheads. Oh, yeah. Yes. So. We're what you might call EWA, eggs with attitude. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, challenging our resident quiz champions today are the out-of-date beer vouchers. Now, this team from Warwickshire all quiz together at the White Swan in Henley in Arden. Let's meet them. Hello, I'm Mike, and I'm a retired clinical researcher. Hello, I'm Paul, and I'm a director of my own marketing company. Hi, I'm Bernie, and I'm a non-executive director. Hi, I'm Pete. I'm the managing director of a small manufacturing company. Hi, I'm Richard. I'm a project development manager in the electricity industry. So, Mike and team, welcome. Great to see you. Got to ask you, Mike, about the team name. Um, well, Jeremy, first time we ever quizzed together was at our local pub. And we were fortunate enough to win, um, and the prize was beer vouchers. Three weeks later, we went back to the pub, said, we'd like some beer, please. And they said, sorry, mate, they're out of date. So, hence, they did relent and they, they honoured them in the end. They but... weren't even joking, they were quite serious. No, they, they were serious. Expired. They were expired. That ever happened to any of you? They usually do it on a six day thing, so you've got to go back before the next quiz. That's, That's it, yeah. yeah. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh, I see. Well, listen, good luck. 
out well, of date you. beer thank vouchers. You. Thank you. Every day there is a £1,000 worth of cash up for grabs for our challenges. If they fail to defeat the eggheads, the prize money rolls over to the next show. So, out of date beer vouchers, after a, a bit of a difficult time, the eggheads have got back on the road. They've won the last two games. They're starting to have a bit of a swagger, and that means £3,000 is on the table for you to win. Would you like to try? Absolutely. Yes, we do. Good Absolutely. stuff. I love it. So, the first head to head battle is on the subject of geography, and you can choose between. Judith, Beth, Pat, Steve, and Chris. So, Richard. Richard. <laughs> Richard. 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 That came up nicely. Yeah. Who do you so want? I'm geography. So um, difficult choice, but uh, I think it's going to be Judith. Okay. Yeah. So Richard from out of date beer vouchers versus the very much in date Judith Keppel. <laughs> <laughs> you happy with that? <laughs> Sounded insincere. <laughs> 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 to ensure there's no conferring, would you, would you please take your positions in our famous question room? All right, Richard, your choice. Would you like to go first or second against Judith? I'll go uh, first, please, Jeremy. And here we go. Good luck. Which of these peninsulas is part of Egypt? Iberian, Balkan or Sinai? OK. Um, hopefully that's uh, fairly straightforward. Um, the answer is Sinai. Sinai is correct. Judith, your question. Which motorway links Southampton to London? M3, M4 or M62? Southampton to London. Southampton to London. Uh, I know it quite well. It's the M3. It is the M3. Well done. Do you go on it a lot? Well, yes, I do. I do go on it. My parents used to live down it on the way to Southampton. Right. This is almost your perfect question. <laughs> yes, good one. OK. Richard, your question. The country of Zambia is bordered by how many countries? One, three or eight? Wow. Um, well, it's definitely not one. I think Botswana, Zimbabwe, Malawi definitely, probably DRC. I, I think there's more than three. So on that basis, I'm going to make a punt and go for eight. Eight is correct. Yay. Well done. <laughs> OK, Judith, your question. JFK Airport is located in which of New York's five boroughs? Brooklyn, Queens, or Manhattan? Well, it's not in Manhattan, because that's covered in skyscrapers, so it wouldn't be a good idea. Oh, Lord, I don't know, I don't know. It never occurred to me to think about it. Um, Queens. Queens is quite right. Well, that's a relief. OK, back to you, Richard. Trying to get three out of three here. What is the approximate population of Mexico? 40, 120, or 200 million? OK, so uh, Mexico City is a very big city. I think that has 20 million in itself. Um, I don't think it's as much as 200, and I don't think it's as few as 40. So um, I'm going to shoot down the middle here and go for 120 million. Yes, you're quite right. Well done. 120 million. <laughs> three out of three, so let's see, Judith. You've got to get this one right. I know. You're feeling focused? I am. Here we go. The national flag of which of these South American countries features a white star in the upper hoist corner? Brazil, Chile, or Argentina? I'm hopeless at flags. I simply can't get a flag into my head. A well, it's not Argentina, because that's got something blue in the middle. Um, Brazil's got something funny in the middle. I think it's Chile because um, I've eliminated the others. Yes, on the basis that Argentina's got something blue in the middle and Brazil's got something funny in the middle. It's got a coffee bean or something. I, don't I know think it's it a is. globe, isn't it? I don't know. Anyway, Chile's right. Chile's right. Doesn't yeah. matter what the others have got. Well done. Three out of three for you both. Oh, it's a bit tense here. So we go to sudden death, Richard. OK. It gets a little bit harder because I don't give you alternative options. Are you ready? I am. The 1,972 feet tall Abraj al Bayt Towers, also known as the Makkah Royal Clock Tower Hotel, is a feature of which country? I don't know. Um, but I do know there's been a lot of tall building in uh, Dubai. So it could be Dubai. Um, so I'm just going to go for Dubai. It's Saudi Arabia, oh, I'm afraid. Bad luck, Richard. But I, I completely bought your logic there. Judith, you can get the round with this. 
The Taklamakan Desert occupies approximately 125,000 square miles, of which Asian country? My son walked across it um, and stayed in a yurt and wrote the most wonderful letter from the yurt, really poetic. Um, where was he? Well, he was west of China, I think. It could, I suppose, still be China. I think I'm going to say China, because I, um, I think it might still be in China. You're right. It is. China's correct. Yeah, west of China is China. Yeah. It turns out. Judith, you've got it on geography. Well done. Sorry, Richard. You played very well. OK. Just a tiny little thing with the, uh, the tower. So you'll be knocked out. Judith will be in the final round. Please, both of you, come back and we'll play on. So, as it stands, the out-of-date beer vouchers have lost one brain from the final round. The eggheads have not lost any. The next subject is film and TV. So which yeah. voucher would like this? <laughs> Pete, over to you. I'll leave Pete. Pretty simple, not much discussion. Pete, OK. Who would you like to take on? Did we say Chris? Did we say Chris? Did we say Chris? Did we say Chris? We'll take Chris. OK. Pete from the out-of-date beer vouchers versus Chris. So, let's see what happens. Please go to our question room now. All right, so film and TV, Pete, would you like to go first or second? Uh, I'd like to go first, Jeremy, please. Here is your first question. Which of these TV characters is best known for his expert knowledge of antiques? Pete, is it Bergerac, Lovejoy or MacGyver? Oh, that takes me back. Um, I do remember watching this back in the day. Might have, I think it was the 80s. Uh, I'd go Lovejoy. Love, Joy's quite right. Well done. Chris, your question. Which businessman has been a dragon on the first 14 series of the TV show Dragon's Den? Richard Branson, Alan Sugar or Peter Jones? Well, not Richard 